What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be talking about how to cash the fall foliage because it's the season for pumpkin spice lattes and rainbow colored trees, am I right? Well, autumn is dope season because you can see the temperature is changing from hot as hell to brick as heck. It's funny because my entire life I grew up in the East Coast but I have never taken advantage of the beautiful foliage and the leaves and the trees and I mean I grew up learning how to rake the leaves and I just looked at fall like oh my gosh this is a dead season where I have to take all these leaves off my driveway and I just never took advantage of taking pictures of it but after getting into photography I mean now all I do is chase conditions no matter what all I do is win 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 no matter what 2020 is the first year where I have ever caught the fall foliage and I went with a group of people who are dope as hell. I love you guys forever. But none of us have ever chased the fall foliage before and there are a lot of things that we did right, a lot of things that we could improve on and this video is here to help you get prepared to catch the fall foliage and everything you need to know for your trip. So if we're talking US specific, there are a bunch of places all around the country where you can go cache the foliage. The main places that the fall foliage is known to peak at is the New England area, which includes Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. I also wrote a blog post on my experience and I included that in the description below, so check that out. But without further ado, let's go in. I got tips for you on how to cache the fall foliage. Prepare to be a last minute planner and to check conditions constantly. There are a lot of things that could impact the foliage from peaking, which includes weather conditions, summer droughts, and which trees are currently present in the area. But if you do need to give in your work a two week notice, I would probably book your trip at the last week of September into early October. But again, the peaks don't show up the same time every year. So if you really want to catch foliage, I would probably start looking at conditions and check Instagram stories very regularly. And this one will probably save you a lot of time, hours of driving into destinations to only be disappointed in the green trees. Green trees are not horrible, but you do want to see those peaks and those vibrant red colors. But if you want to save your time and your PTO days from running out, I would just start checking in the beginning of October and probably tell your boss that you are planning a trip, but you don't know exactly when because of the peaks. Housing and accommodations. Again, going back to the last minute type of planner thing, I hope that when you're there, the least you do have is a car rental. When we were booking our trip, we had not really any plan of what we were going to actually do and where we were gonna stay besides the first three days we were there. But thankfully we had our soccer car, mama minivan. I booked the car a few days before we actually left and the minivan was one of the options. And I was like, there's no way we're gonna be driving this mama car minivan. But let me tell you that it was the most perfect car for the entire trip. There were four of us and everybody had enough leg room and places to sleep and nap. We didn't have any problems fitting our luggage in the car. And not only that, but we used the back seat as our closet. We had like 15 jackets just thrown in the back and we even had space to buy three pumpkins that we obviously used props in our pictures, but it was a dope car. The end of an era to our mama minivan. Peace. Peace out. It's been a good solid two and a half weeks. Call me on Instagram. <laughs> Keith. Keith with a K and Derek Arling. Derek and our uh, dirty floor of the mama minivan. It's been real, y'all. It has been real. Deuces. If you're traveling with at least four people, might wanna consider a minivan and you know just roll it out with it. But aside from the car accommodations, in total, we slept at 11 different hotels, Airbnbs, even a Walmart parking lot. And quite frankly, it was a lot having to pack our bags and moving on to the next place. But we were chasing the colors again. So if you're a last minute planner, I'm gonna remind you to not freak out if you don't have a place to stay because you are going to be checking Instagram stories and updates and blog posts on where the colors are peaking the most. So so usually we booked our hotels either the night before or the morning of and we just pretty much drove destination to destination. On average, you're probably going to spend anywhere from 
$80 to $150 on one night stay. So if you are a budget traveler, I would probably advise to travel in a group or if you really don't care to car camp at a Walmart parking lot, but the cost does add up. If you're planning this trip months in advance, I think the best option is to actually get a hold of an RV if you can, because again, you're chasing the colors. You don't know where you're going to stay. So an RV has the capabilities of housing you and taking you to the places you need to go to. I cannot stress enough how important these essentials are to bring on your fall foliage trip. Number one, you wanna bring hiking shoes. Number two, you wanna bring a headlamp. And number three, if you're into the IG game, you definitely want to bring a red or a yellow jacket or maybe even both. Hiking shoes. I cannot emphasize how important hiking shoes are going to be for your fall foliage trip. Not only are you going to be hiking mountains to see the tops and the peaks of the trees, but hiking shoes are also really nice during the day because again, you don't really know how the weather is going to plan out, but hiking shoes are a good finishing touch to the cold and probably your autumn outfits and stuff you're going to wear. And you never know, maybe one day you want to go hike and the day before it rained. And you definitely don't want to be stepping in mud and dirt in your sneakers or your regular running shoes. Headlamps. Headlamps are also extremely important for this fall foliage trip. That is, if you are into doing things in the dark, maybe you want to hike up a mountain for sunrise, or maybe if you're catching sunset on your way down, you definitely don't want to be bumping into trees or tripping over rocks and branches. Headlamps are super helpful and they're inessential if you're looking to do outdoor these things. And lastly, a red or a yellow jacket. Now, yes, if you are into the IG game where you wanna emphasize the big landscape, tiny person type of thing, you definitely want to make a red or a yellow jacket an essential camera gear. Ultimately, depending on your goals and what you're trying to capture and where you're trying to get out of this fall foliage trip, if you're trying to capture these beautiful photos on a camera, I highly recommend that you do bring one. I shoot with a Sony a6400 and I have been shooting with this over the last year. I have two lenses that I carry around with me. I have an 18 to 105 millimeter lens, which is a dope lens. It allows me to kind of zoom into the trees and get like more crispy zoomed in photos of the leaves. And you know, instead of me try, trying to rent out a kayak and you know, like paddle my way over to take a shot of the leaves, it gives me that zoom effect. I also shoot with a 10 to 18 millimeter lens. This is the one that I'm using right now to shoot this video, but it's dope, especially for vloggers because it gives you that wide perspective. Aside from having a camera, I would also recommend that if you're trying to get those those aerial views of the trees on top and the lakes and you know like all the cool shots with the fog I would totally recommend getting a drone unfortunately while we were in Vermont the wind took my drone away RIP R2 it had a good life while it lasted and last but not least do not forget to have fun whether this is your first or your fifth time catching the fall foliage. And whether or not you're freaking out and you're panicking on where you're gonna sleep for the night, do not forget to have fun. Just seeing the changing of the autumn leaf colors with the people that you love, drinking pumpkin spice lattes and eating apple cider donuts for the entire week, it's, it's a lot of fun. So that's it guys, those are the tips I have for you. If you ever plan on catching the fall foliage wherever you are in the world, thank you guys so much for watching this far into my video and supporting me on this journey of mine. If you haven't done so already, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love you guys so much and don't forget, safe travels.